Hello and welcome to the Equus of Palace podcast. I'm Fossil Greenborough and today Pod 41 I'll be looking at the result against Chelsea but bring you my match review pair rankings and my man match. As well as this, I'm also going to bring you an exclusive interview with Sam Allardyce, Christian Menteke and Wayne Hennessy after the game. So let's begin. History repeated itself as Palace picked up a second successive 2-1 win at Stamford Bridge to end Chelsea's 13-match winning home record and seal an incredible fourth win in a row. All the goals came in a blistering 11-minute period at the start of the match, with Palace bouncing back from Cesc Fabregas' fourth-minute opener by stunning the Blues thanks to two goals in 60 seconds from Wilfred Zaha and Christian Menteke. And despite there being an hour and 20 minutes still to play, as well as nine minutes of added time, Sam Allardyce's defence held firm to record a famous win against the Premier League's champions-elect. A breathtaking, action-filled encounter began with a bang as a flurry of early goals went in and it originally looked like it was going to be a difficult afternoon for the Eagles as the host grabbed the opener just four minutes in. A racking pass set Eden Hazard scampering down the left and delving into his box of tricks he found a way to escape past Joe Ward and centre for the untracked Fabregas to top the ball past Wayne Hennessy from close range via the upright. Most teams would have crumbled at the prospect of falling behind so early on against the runaway league leaders, but Palace responded positively and incredibly within seven minutes they found themselves in front by turning the game on its head. It all began on nine minutes when Jason Punchin nodded the ball to Benteke just outside the area. He held it up and played it to Zaha, who dribbled to the edge of the area and despite being crowded by three defenders, he unleashed a low shot that found the one piece of netting that Thibaut Courtois couldn't stop to draw his team level. Then just 60 minutes later the pair combined again to send the visiting fans into dreamland. A swift counter-attack begun when Benteke received the ball on the halfway line and advanced 20 yards before finding Zaha. Immediately Blues defenders swarmed around him which allowed the winger to quickly return it to the unmarked Belgium and despite not scoring for two months Palace's top scorer showed great composure to sit Courtois down and dink the ball over him to move into double figures for league goals this term. Knowing that they would immediately face a backlash Palace were put under plenty of pressure and after escaping strong penalty appeals after the ball struck Andrus Townsend's arm, only the reactions of Hennessy kept them in front when Hazard and Fabregas linked out to carve a chance for Diego Costa, who slipped when shooting but the Eagles keeper managed to get something on it to prevent it crossing the line. Limited to the odd venture forward, Palace nearly extended their lead when Jason Punchin dragged a 25 yard and narrowly passed the post, but the barrage continued and Hennessy was kept busy in the half latter stages. Firstly blocking a fizzle from Hazard before twice denying Matic who saw a scuffed grass cutter and a header from a Fabregas free kick saved by the Welshman as Palace escaped into the break with their lead intact. At half time Allardyce had to make a switch with Scott Down replacing James Tompkins but just 10 minutes later the skipper had to be stretched off after he twisted his knee bravely blocking a goal bound Costa effort with Damien Delaney becoming the third man to line up alongside the rock solid Mamadou Sacco. But despite another setback for the visitors, they nearly made it 3-1 when another break saw Jason Punchin playing Zaha, who forced Courtois to save with his feet. Thankfully for the Eagles, the chances began to ease up, with Hennessy not called into action when Willian fired a free kick over the top. However, there was a let-up with 15 minutes remaining, when Costa should have buried a header after some fine wing play by Hazard, but the Spanish international screwed his header wide of the mark. However, as the minutes ticked by, Chelsea threw more caution to the wind, but they were finding Hennessy in fine form, and his next save came when Fabregas took aim from 10 yards out, but it was thwarted by the shot stopper's feet, and then Costa headed on the top of the net as the Eagles kept closer to a win. And despite 7 minutes of stoppage time being awarded, Allardyce's side saw out the final stages, and it could even have been sealed when Zaha fired over from just outside the box. But another 2-1 win at Stamford Bridge made it 4 wins out of 4 as the quest to stay in the Premier League took a massive step forward. It's rare for teams to go to Stamford Bridge and get wins, but Crystal Palace have done so twice in two seasons, and with this one against the league leaders unbeaten in 13 home matches, secured what is undoubtedly one of the best away results in the club's history, as they triumph 2-1. Now for some positives from the game. 
The Palace of Old would have allowed their heads to drop after conceding as early as they did, with Cesc Fabregas scoring in the fifth minute. But this is a different side now, one capable of showing character and determination in the face of a constant Chelsea onslaught. Instead of allowing the goal to impact negatively, Palace scored two and then held firm for the remainder of the game. It was an outstanding result. Now for some negatives from the game. The injury to Scott Dan, which looked to be a serious one, doesn't help Palace's cause in the coming weeks. Crystal Palace pulled off one of the shock results of the season as they won 2 1 away at runaway Premier League leaders Chelsea on Saturday. Goals from Wilfred Zaha and Christian Menteke turned the game on its head after Cesc Fabregas had given the hosts an early lead, with Palace winning at Stamford Bridge for the second year in a row. In doing so, they ended the Blues' 13 match winning streak in West London and gave hope to the chasing pack in the title race, with Tottenham winning away at Burnley to move within seven points of Chelsea. But what did we learn from the game? Here are five things. Number 1. He's just too good for you. Wolfred Zaha silenced his critics once again with his superb finish low into the corner at Stamford Bridge to draw Palace level, before setting up Christian Menteke for the second just a couple minutes later. Cue the usual chant of he's just too good for you from the Palace faithful. And it was sung many more times as he showed off his slicky skills to tie the Chelsea defenders up in knots. Number 2. Calmness personified. Christian Menteke's finish for Crystal Palace's second goal was simply sublime. After sharing a 1-2 and being played in by Wilfred Zaha, the former Liverpool and Aston Villa man made his Belgium teammate Thibaut Courtois look like an April fool, putting the goalkeeper on the deck before chipping the ball over him into the empty net. Number 3. Wayne's World Some days a goalkeeper is just in fine form and it looks like nothing will get past him. Wayne Hennessy had one of those days at Stamford Bridge. He made a number of fine saves in the first half to keep Chelsea out. Number 4. Injury Woes after James Tonkins was replaced by Scott Dan at half-time, the club captain then had to be taken off just 10 minutes later with what looked like to be a serious knee injury after landing awkwardly having blocked a shot from Diego Costa. Sam Allardyce didn't confirm the extent of these injuries, but both could be set for a spell on the sidelines. And number 5. Crystal Palace can win a London derby. The Eagles came into this game with a woeful recent record in London derbies, having picked up no points from their previous games against the sides from the capital so far this season. But they ended here with a priceless victory, becoming the first team to beat Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in a 3 o'clock kickoff on a Saturday since they last won at the same venue back in August 2015. So now you've heard the match review, we're now going to move on to the player rankings. But before we start, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Crystal Palace for all the latest news. And for all you Facebook users out there, don't forget to check out our Facebook group so you can join in the latest discussions, read the latest news and post your own opinion. So like I said there, if you're on social media and you do want to get in contact with us, then of course you can follow us on both Twitter and Facebook and you can find both these pages using the at Crystal Palace. And obviously I would recommend you do follow both of these pages because we do regularly update them with the latest news. So if you do like to keep up to date with all things Palace and all the latest transfer rumours, then of course do give us a follow so you can get all the links to all the stories. And also after the game we do post player and manager interviews. So after the game, if you do want to hear what the manager had to say about the game, what a player had to say, or even what chairman Steve Parrish had to say after the game, then of course do give us a follow so we can link you to these pages. And also, you know, a thing that's quite common, quite popular at the minute on Twitter, and that is the Twitter polls, and you know, we do post a few Twitter polls every so often, some of them being the man of match ones, some of them being about how many points you think we need to stay up and avoid relegation. So we do post a very uh, sort of a variety of different polls. So like I said, if you do want to get involved in things like that, you want to read the latest news, then obviously I would recommend you do follow us. And the thing is, the same goes to Facebook. If you are on Facebook, then do give our page a follow on there as well. But on Facebook, another thing we do have, and that's actually our Facebook group. And much like the other social media pages, pages you can find it using the at Crystal Palace. And obviously, I would highly recommend you do join the group, which I'm actually a member of. And that is because after the game, quite a lot of fans do go on there to post their own opinions. So whether that will be on players and how they thought they performed, or anything they just saw in the game, whether that, whether that will be 
describing goal, whether it be a referee's decision. They do go, people go onto the Facebook group, comment what they think so other people can see what they thought of the game. And that's quite good because the whole point of the Facebook group is just to add a little bit of discussion between other fans. So if you go on there and post your opinion, other fans can see what you thought about the game and then you can comment and debate about what if you agree with each other or whether you disagree with each other's opinion and obviously on Facebook you can comment on that so you can you know have a discussion with other people about your views but to be honest if you're one of the people like myself who yes you have you have your own opinion but you want to read what other people thought about the game then of course a Facebook group is a great place to go and obviously if you did go to the game and you don't want to discuss it because maybe it was a loss but there was a good display from the home cell fanatics then of course take pictures of the display and upload them into the Facebook group because I'm sure there may be a few people who weren't able to go to the game and they can view your images so they can get a feel of the atmosphere there but like I said on if you do join the Facebook group it's a brilliant place to share your opinion read what others had to say and also like the other Facebook pages and the uh, and the Twitter page we do regularly update it with the latest news we post all the links to different articles so if you do want to keep up to date with all things Palace from that in that way then of course the Facebook group is a place a great place to go and obviously if you if you do want to find all these social media groups uh, if, and you can't find them using the at then of course do check the, check the links in the description below on YouTube iTunes and Acast you'll find all the links you need to the podcast uh, sorry to the social media pages so of course you can give us a follow from there but obviously this doesn't apply what I'm going to say to people listening on iTunes or Acast but if you are listening on to on YouTube then you can of course drop a comment below the video about what you thought about the game and I must say how important and an impressive win it was but if you do do comment below with what you thought about, about the game who you thought the standout player was for Palace and that's only so I can hear what you know your opinion what you had to say about the game and I might I know a few Chelsea fans may be listening to the podcast so you know you too do comment below in the description below uh, in, in the comment section about what you thought about the game and what you thought went wrong for Chelsea against us but obviously like much like the Facebook group we want to hear your opinion so do comment below the video with your opinion now obviously in the last few weeks I've, I've actually set a challenge to the listeners and that is to give you or you to give me your player ratings rating all of the players from 1 to 10 with 1 being the worst and 10 being the best and that's obviously summarising how you thought the players performed throughout the game so obviously in the podcast I give you my opinion I rank all of the players from the best to the worst giving them ratings from 1 to 10 but what I want you to do in the YouTube comments is to comment below with all of the players and maybe the substitutes and give them ratings from 1 to 10 about how you thought they performed and what I want you to do the reason I want you to do it is so I can compare it to mine and see whether we thought whether we had a similar sort of outlook on the game and whether we thought all of the players put in the same amount of performance and efforts uh, throughout the game and that's you know like I said the whole point of you commenting is yes so I can so I can improve the content but also because I really want to hear what you thought about the game and like I said at the beginning it was a really really important win so I want to hear what others had to say about it but also you know if you don't want to comment with the player rankings rating the players then of course do drop a comment below about anything about the game how fantastic it was how good the goals were from Zaha and Benteke you know who your man of the match was and you know even if that person wasn't the man of the match who you thought had the biggest influence of the game so like I said do comment below with your thoughts in the YouTube comments but like I said at the beginning, if you do want to keep up to date with all things Palace, then of course do follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Do join the Facebook group if you like discussion. But enough of that, now to move on to my player rankings. Starting in goal with Wayne Hennessy, who I am going to give a 9. Arguably his best performance in a Palace shirt, producing numerous saves at key points throughout the game. So obviously Wayne Hennessy here, it's another win for him in goal, four wins in a row and a fantastic performance from him and hence why I've given him a nine and I'll go on to talk about who the man of the match was later in the podcast but certainly Wayne Hennessy is one of the high contenders for that and obviously I think personally and I know quite a lot of fans have said this on social media, I think we can argue about this but I personally think it was his best performance in the Palace shirt because I've never seen him in a game make this many saves before, I've never seen, seen him not drop a cross in a game before so this game all the things added together what you want a keeper to do Wayne Hennessy done that in the game and I don't think he done anything wrong throughout the game other than a few of his saves he spooled them out uh, right in front of the goal but obviously we were able to clear them but certainly a fantastic performance from him hence why I've given him the nine you know I think it's his best performance at Palace and the reason for that is like I said at the beginning all the saves he made the fact that he didn't make any big errors but yeah it was just a fantastic performance it's very hard to put it into words because he done everything right and considering we were under constant slaughter 
from Chelsea. They kept putting us under pressure, kept attacking us, kept putting taking off defenders and putting on the tackles to try and get at us. Considering we were under so much pressure, Wayne Hennessy, I think, and the defence as a whole, done very well to you know stop the chances or save them when they come to him. But certainly, countless saves to keep us in the game. Fantastic. And the one save I must highlight is there was one at point blank range. Diego Costa got the ball to his feet. He sort of slipped, hit it towards goal. And Wayne Hennessy managed to get his body behind it and get it out so it could be cleared. So that save in particular kept us in the game. And if he hadn't have made that save, the game would have been 2-2 at that point. So just showing how one of his saves was crucial to the way the game made. And actually, or how the game went. And actually looking at the stats, he actually made 14 saves in total. So, you know, in the last few games, he's made one or two uh, you know, saved because he hasn't really been challenged. But when he got challenged because of Chelsea's constant threat, he managed to make the save, and obviously, hence why he got 14 of them. But fantastic achievement from him. You know, like I've said already, claimed all the crosses. Distribution was much better, much quicker. You know, he tried to release the ball quickly, so the likes of Wilfred, part of Punchin. Townsend, Benteke, all of these players could get forward more because we didn't have many chances to get forward because, like I said, of the pressure of Chelsea. But when we did get the chance, Wayne Hennessy would, you know, distribute the ball quickly so we can you go forward and attack more. And obviously, I've talked about how good Wayne Hennessy is. Obviously, I've given him a nine. But he's been, you know, he's been put into the BBC's team of the week for the Premier League. So there are actually four Palace plays in this and considering it's 11 aside it's quite impressive and it shows how good our performance was the fact that four Palace players have actually made it into the team of the week uh, team of the week and this was obviously made by one of the BBC's pundits but obviously Wayne Hennessy got in there in goal like I said 14 saves and a fourth consecutive win you know you're going to give him some credit because it was a good performance from him 14 saves as well you know Mamadou Saka as well another solid performance from him yes he didn't keep the clean sheet but he was solid again you know being that rock in the defence making tackles blocks clearances everything you want him to do Wilfred Zaha as well, you know, Wilfred Zaha scored the goal and assisted the other one, fantastic, he was the biggest threat throughout the game, running down them flanks, uh, you know, skilling up the Chelsea defenders, and Christian Benteke as well, you know, Benteke assisted Zaha, uh, and Zaha assisted him, but Benteke assisted him, Benteke, lovely goal, chipping it over the keeper, so for them, them sort of, these four players have been nominated for their sort of contribution, obviously Hennessy and Saka being the defensive side, and obviously Zaha and Benteke for assisting and obviously scoring uh, goals. But certainly the fact that four players have made it into the team a week just highlights how good of a performance it was. But certainly I think Wayne Hennessy fully deserves the nine I've given him. Like I said at the beginning, certainly, in my opinion, his best performance in a Palace shirt because obviously of how many saves he made. But if he can continue this against Southampton, against Arsenal in the, few, in the next few days and weeks, then I'm sure he'll be crucial keep to keeping us up this season. And I think with all of the team, really, the fact that we've now kept four consecutive or we've had four consecutive wins and winning against the champions elect, I think that's really going to boost the confidence of the team. And hopefully going to the likes of Arsenal, you know, Southampton, Leicester, all of these teams coming up in the next few weeks, hopefully that confidence will help us to get something there. Obviously moving on now to the left back Jeffrey Slop, who I'm going to give a seven. Struggled in the first half to get a foothold against Pedro, but made improvements in the second half. So obviously Jeffrey Slup here, I've given him a 7 because once again it was a very good performance from him. And I talked about this last week about him coming in for Van Aanholt and doing a very decent job. Doing what was expected of him but not doing anything brilliant. This game was exactly the same. You know Van Aanholt still out injured, may return for Southampton, we we're not too sure yet. But Jeffrey Slup came in at that left back role and done a good job of it. And obviously I talked about... You know, Chelsea putting us under constant pressure. You know, they did. And the, the likes of Pedro, Hazard on the wings, kept, you know, getting crosses in, trying to cut inside. But, and, you know, as the game, when the game started, Jeffrey Slup sort of struggled with this. You know, he wasn't able to keep up with Pedro. He wasn't able, you know, to block his crosses in. But as sort of, much like, much like all of the players, as soon as he got that second goal and we were in ahead in the game, the confidence of the team grew and slowly, slowly he made improvements in the second half. And, you know, considering he had the likes of Pedro and Hazard to mark down the wing, these are world-class players. So the fact that he was able to contain them all right for the whole game is credit to him. And, you know, I said he wasn't very good. He, I, I think the word to use it is reasonably. So he didn't do a fantastic job of stopping them, but he did do what he done what he could do to stop the likes of Pedro and Hazard, their sort of threat down the uh, down the wings. And you know he tried to contain him defensively, 
And, you know, because of that, because we were under so much pressure, he didn't really get that many chances to go forward. You know, he is a left back, much like Van Aanholt, who likes to get forward, likes to help and assist the wingers. But obviously, because of the pressure from Chelsea, he couldn't really do that. But certainly, there was one time, I think, in the game where he done a lovely one-two pass with Zaha, got into the box, had a shot, and then Zaha fired just over. So just showing that, yeah, the one chance he had to get forward, he took it well. And obviously resulted in him getting across the Zaha. And obviously unlucky unlucky for us. He couldn't kill the game off and score. But certainly a 7 for Slup. Uh, Slup. Not the, you know not a fantastic performance. But done what was expected of him. And considering he has world class players. As in Pedro and Hazard to mark. I think he done a reasonable job at that. Obviously moving on now to the man mountain. Mumbadu Sako. Who, I, who I'm also going to give a 9. An outstanding defensive performance in the face of Diego Costa's bruising style. So before I go on to just talk about Mamadou Sacco, I'll just give you a little stat here. And he's played four games for Palace and we've had four wins. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think his influence on the side is crucial to keeping us up this season. And, you know, we've seen already by the fact that he's, you know, he's kept or he's kept three clean sheets and four wins. Just shows how much influence and how good he is to the side. Now, obviously... It was an outstanding performance. That's the word to use it. You know, I don't think he put a foot wrong. You know, he was making, uh, he was making tackles, making clearances, clearing the danger when he had to do, had to do it. And you know, that's that's quite impressive. And considering, you know, he had the job of marking Costa, Costa, one of the top. I think he's maybe second in the Premier League goal scoring uh, charts this season. So the fact that he managed to keep quiet and literally leave him with only one or two chances to score it's just credit to how well Sacco and Tompkins and Slop def and uh, Slop and Ward defended the fact that we were able to keep one of the Premier League's top scorers quiet and limited to only maybe one or two chances throughout the game and you know some people may say that Diego Costa's still in Mamadou Sacco's pocket I probably think it is because as the cliche goes you know if you do well defensively against a team you say that you're you know the players in their pocket. I think we can say that uh, Diego Costa is in Bombardier uh, Sacco's pocket because he had no chances throughout the game, and obviously he kept him very solid. But certainly, you know, Diego Costa. You know, I really rate him. He's a really, really good striker. I rate him because of his footballing skills, not necessarily of his attitude. But I think he's a really good footballer. But the fact that Mamadou Sacco, the whole of the defence as well, managed to stay composed and, uh, you know, stop, stop him and restrict him to getting chances is credit to him. And obviously, because of this outstanding performance, like I said, uh, or like I mentioned with Wayne Hennessy, he obviously was in the BBC's uh, Team of the Week Um for the uh, this weekend's football and obviously Samuel Allardyce actually said uh, after the game that Crystal Palace obviously have to stay in the Premier League before they can even consider uh, whether they want to buy the Liverpool defender Mamadou Sacco so obviously if we stay up in the Premier League so Samuel Allardyce reckons maybe 38 points so let's say we get to 38 points or 40 points and we're safe in the Premier League I think they can start negotiating with Liverpool sort of a pre-contract contract. so when the season ends and the transfer window opens we can sign him on a permanent deal and like Samuel I said, you know, we've got to wait till that. If our Premier League status or when our Premier League status is confirmed, then we'll start negotiating because he is a crucial asset to the side. And this is actually what a quote from Samuel Dice, he said that he is enjoying his football here, though, and he's brought a resilience to the team as an example by the way we've played. Uh, so, you know, even Sam Allardyce is putting praise in him, praising him. The fact that he's enjoying football here, which is good. He's got the attitude. The fact that he brought the resilience to the side, making us more solid. And the fact that he's an example. So the likes of Tompkins have drastically improved when Sacco came in. So obviously he's Tompkins, Ward. They're all learning off of Sacco and making that improvement. And I, I'm, you know, with Sam Allardyce here. If he's enjoying his football, if he's playing well, then certainly when we or if we get Premier League status again next season, then certainly he should be the first player that we go to sign. But, you know, I must say four wins or so four games, four wins is just showing how crucial he is to the side. And, you know, I, I really, really think that Steve Parrish needs to consider signing him on a permanent deal because there are going to be other clubs wanting to buy him. I know Southampton want to buy him because they've seen how good he is for Palace. So if we can manage to stay in the Premier League and then get sort of a pre-contract thing agreed with Liverpool to sign him up uh, permanently, then I think that would be a great deal for us. But I must say, a 9 from Mamadou Sacco after another outstanding defensive performance, which hope hopefully he can carry on. And I must say, you know, this is the first week 
or the first time in this season that I've actually given more than two nines. So there will be another nine to go. But that just highlights how good of a performance it was. The fact that uh, two or more players have actually got nines. But obviously moving on now to the uh, Sacco's fellow centre-back. And uh, that is James Tompkins, who I am going to give an eight. Continued to build on his great relationship with Sacco until he suffered an injury before half-time. Let's hope this is not a serious one. So obviously James Tonkins here, I've given him an 8 because much like Sacco, he was absolutely solid. And although he wasn't on the pitch for the whole of the game, he got taken off at half time. In that, in that half, in that sort of 45 minutes, he had another solid performance. You know, he was putting in tackles, putting in blocks. And like I said, with Wayne Hennessy, with, you know, Chelsea putting us under constant pressure, uh, Tompkins managed to stay resilient and obviously kept all the chances out and to be honest it was a shame that he went off at half time because he was playing uh, so well but I personally think looking at it you know it was a thigh injury apparently and he was probably taken off as a precaution so hopefully that injury isn't really too serious because the sort of partnership with Tompkins and Sacco has been brilliant so far this season so we want to sort of keep up that partnership and even though he may miss the Southampton game. We've got the likes of Delaney and Kelly, who actually played really well in this game. If they can come in and, you know, do a job in the place of him, then I'm sure it would be all right. But, you know, once again, if he, you know, it would have been good for him to stay on the pitch if he hadn't got injured because he was absolutely solid in the game. And, you know, Sam Allardyce, although he hasn't confirmed about how bad his injury is, he has actually said that he probably missed the Southampton game, which means, you know, most teams are probably going to be resting players because they've got three matches in about seven days, so they're probably going to be resting players. So maybe that will give us a chance to see the likes of Kelly and Delaney come back into the team and see how they can cope. But certainly, I've given him an eight, you know, a good performance from him, good solid performance. And like I said, that partnership with Sacco seems to be improving every week. And unluckily for us, we probably won't see it against Southampton. But hopefully the injury isn't too serious so we can see that partnership very soon. But once again, a fantastic, solid performance from him where with, uh, you know, Tompkins putting in blocks and tackles. Now to move on to the final player of our back four, and that is the right back, Joe Ward, who I am going to give a 7. Ward's resurgence continued with a good performance against Chelsea's pacey attack. So to Joe Ward here, I've given him a 7 because once again it was a very solid performance from him and you must credit him for how he's improved drastically over our last 4 wins. But much like, much like Jeffrey Slarp, he'd done a very good defensive job and done what was expected of him but obviously didn't have many chances to go forward. But before I go on to talk about his performance, I must talk about how he's improved uh, since Allardyce has come into the club. So obviously under Pardew, you know, Ward was either playing really or he was out of form or he was playing on the left. And when he was playing left back, he sort of lost all his confidence and because he was playing out of position, he was qu playing quite bad. But as soon as Sam Allardyce came in, he changed up the setup of the team <clears throat> Sorry, and played Joe Ward back at right back again. And slowly, slowly, we've seen him improved. And especially in the last sort of three, four games and the, the wins, we've seen him improve drastically. And, you know, that was credit to him, obviously, the fact that Allardyce has got him or, or, you know, got him together and said, you know, we need to improve your form. And the fact that he's improved his form is not only credit to the manager, but also credit to the way that Joe Ward plays. The fact that he can see where he's going wrong, get a new manager in who tells him where, to, where he's going wrong. And obviously he can go and improve uh, against that. And, you know, the, the game against Chelsea, you know, Chelsea, like I said, putting constant pressure on us, using their pace. But it was another good performance and just showing how Joe Ward's performances are slowly, slowly improving as the season goes on. But, you know, considering I've talked about Chelsea's pace, but the main man yet to mark was Eden Hazard. You know, we know he's a world class player, but, you know, although we did struggle, much like Slup struggled with Pedro, although he started to struggle with him in the first half, he kept turning him. And actually the goal came from the fact that Hazard went to the byline, got past Joe Ward and then put the cross in. So we could blame him for the goal for not, you know, for not blocking the cross or getting turned too easily. But we won the we won the game, so we're not going to worry too much about that. But after that sort of mistake where he didn't track, um, you know, Hazard quick enough, he seemed to grow more into the game and get better as the game went on. And that's the thing. Uh, the word or the phrase I like to use about players when they perform like this is, you know, they grew into the game. So once that little thing where he lost his marker went wrong, you know, he didn't let his head drop like the rest of the team carried on and then once the we scored our second goal we were in and when we were in the lead the whole confidence of the team went forward and Joe Ward much like Slup, much like some of the some of the other members of the team his performance slowly improved but like I said Joe Ward is a good performance against Chelsea nothing spectacular but done a defensive job you know stayed firm had that solidity that determination to keep uh, to get the win 
and obviously as you can see at the end with the celebrations he obviously meant a lot to him and obviously all the players keeping uh, getting a win fourth consecutive win but certainly a seven from him you know credit to Joe Ward for how he's improved over the last few weeks and uh, like I said credit must go to him also Sam Allardyce for obviously taking him away and trying to improve the way he's playing obviously going to move on now to the midfield and in my opinion the sort of formation we were playing was sort of a 4-1 for one formation but as the game sort of petered out you know it's turned more to like maybe a 4-3-3 with three defensive midfielders because Chelsea were putting us under so much pressure the likes of Luke Milowalowicz, uh, Jan Kabay Jason Pudgy they are playing so deep at times to sort of try and contain Chelsea that actually it was like a 4-3-3 playing with them really really deep players and obviously the front three Benteke, Zaha, Townsend you know yes they've done defensive work by tracking back but they primarily were sort of positioned in the attacking role so if we got the ball and considering we only had about 23 percent possession when we had the ball we take it down the wings on the counter-attack and obviously our two goals came from counter-attacks which just shows that when we had our chance we took them and ultimately that led to us uh, winning the game so now to move on to the first defensive midfielder Luka Milovic who I'm going to give an eight worked tirelessly to cut out Chelsea's passing channels and show great composure despite the constant pressure so obviously Luca here, I've given him an eight because once again it was a very solid performance from the new signing. And I must mention before I go on to talk about his performances, you know, since he's joined the club, he's played five games, we've won four of them, and in them sort of five games, I've never given him a rating less than six, which is just credit to how well he's adapted to the Premier League in the fact that he can perform straight away coming into the side. And you know, that must be credit to him, the fact that he's got himself down at the training ground, put his head down and tried to get used to the way the Premier League is, you know, the style of play, and he's done that really well. And obviously that's why he's got no less than six it just shows you know how well he's adapted to the Premier League but in this game I've given him an eight because it was a fantastic performance from him obviously like I said playing in a deeper role playing in that sort of middle of the park role he had to protect the back four which he's done in past games he'd done that very well and although he didn't keep the clean sheet this week you know we didn't expect to do that but we came away with the win and here's resilience along with the back four's resilience obviously helped us to keep the clean sheet but what he what he had to do obviously protecting the back four but he had to try and cut out all of Chelsea's passing channels so obviously they're going to try and get balls up to the likes of Hazard, Pedro to Diego Costa so he had to try and be the man in the middle to stop them passes and to be honest he'd done it very well he stayed composed he didn't get in sort of when like like Sam Allardyce said when when they scored when Chelsea scored we didn't let our heads drop we stayed composed and obviously we went on to score and obviously win the game and you know the fact that he stayed composed and even though we were under so much pressure he tried to do a job and he'd done it very well and that's very good the fact that when he's under constant pressure you know Chelsea putting so much pressure on us to try or them trying to score a goal we stayed composed made sure we still done the job and obviously we coped with the pressure but I think really you know I talked about cutting out the channel passes you know the likes of Fabregas, Matic they're really really good passers of the ball same with Kante but you know Luca's role was to stop them passing so the attackers wouldn't get the ball he'd done that very well and also you know when we were playing so deep when it was maybe we were putting six men behind the ball maybe seven you know he still had to you know mark costa and there was a few occasions where he drifted out wide just to in the box just to sort of give cover and he'd done that reasonably well, uh, well a few times on costa you know getting the ball away and although there was a few fouls here and there which he could have been booked for you know these are sort of tactical fouls as they call them the pundits call them where you take a foul for the team if you get booked it's not the end of the world because you stopped an attacking chance but certainly that sort of influence on his game the fact that he could be that rock in front of the defence making sure that they can't or Chelsea couldn't get through making sure that they couldn't pass the ball in all of that was fantastic and like I said the thing that not many people highlight which I like to highlight is the fact that he made tactical fouls the fact that you know Chelsea were going forward he'd make a foul yes he made get booked for it which I believe he did get booked in the end but there was a few tackles here here and there which he'd done Yes, they could be bookable fences on another day, but they were solid tackles to obviously stop the team going forward. But once again, an eight, a very solid performance from Luca, And obviously, we're now try starting to see the qualities that he brings to the side in the fact that he gives that little bit of solidity in front of the uh, the back four. Obviously, moving on now to his fellow partner in that defensive role, and that's actually Johan Kabai, who I'm going to give a seven. Like Ward, Kabai has had a resurgence under Allardyce. Shows ceaseless energy to ensure that Palace stayed in the game. 
So obviously Jan Kabai here, I've given him a 7, because much like the whole team, they had a very good performance. And although he didn't have as much influence as he would have liked on the game, we must credit him for, for how much he's improved under Sam Allardyce. So much like Ward, you know, Kabai was out of form. He hadn't really scored that many goals as he did at this stage last season. So he was falling behind in that aspect. But, you know, his performances were way down under par. And Allardyce came in. He sort of played him more in a more advanced role and certainly in the last sort of five, six games we've seen a totally different Kabai who's resurged and actually become an even better player. And we must credit Sam Allardyce for that, for getting the likes of Ward and Kabai together to get their act together. And once he'd done that, they've improved drastically. And you know, in this game, a classic example, yes he didn't have that many attacking opportunities because he was playing, you know, so far a deep. But he showed ceaseless energy, he didn't stop till the end. And I think this was the first game he hasn't actually been subbed off uh, for. And considering we played 90 minutes, plus about 7 to 9 additional minutes, that just shows how much the fitness has improved. Because under Sam, uh, under Alan Pardew, he probably would have been off in his 70th minute. But in this game, he played there about 97 minutes. So it just shows how the fitness has improved. But other than the fitness, his performances have improved. And I think, you know, that's credit to Allardyce and obviously himself. But in this game, he continued that form of performing well. You know, his job was to control the Palace midfield. He'd done that very well, you know, starting up being the man between the defence and the attack. He'd done that very well. And obviously, much like Luke, we had to sort of try and stop Chelsea's constant pressing so intercepting passes and there was a few occasions where he'd done that and although on a few occasions yes he got the ball away but he sort of dribbled and ended up giving away possession to the other team with you know the sloppy passes and sloppy touches you know as a whole other than them few little mistakes here and there we didn't get punished for them anyway but other than them few mistakes he done a pretty solid job in front of the back four and obviously that's why I've given him the seven and hopefully with Allardyce you know improving all of the players Hopefully with Kabaya playing in a more advanced role, maybe against Southampton he may be able to bag himself a goal. Because we've seen this season against Leicester, against Burnley, the quality he's got to score goals. I believe it was Burnley, but whoever he scored the goals against, you know, he scored two goals this season. Both of them running into the box late, you know, to have a shot from the cross. So just showing that he's got that quality there to be an attacking presence. But in this game, he didn't really have that attacking presence. But because we were playing so deep. He had to do a defensive job and he obviously done that very well. Obviously moving on now to the captain Jason Punchin, who I am going to give a 7. Four games and four wins as captain. Punchin is a figure that the players have found easy to unite around and his performances have seen a lift too. When in possession he kept the ball well, when not he ensured that the team took their positions and shape. So obviously Jason Punchin here the captain, once again a very solid performance from him and I've given him a 7. And much like the stat I gave you... Uh, with Mamadou Sakho, four games and four wins as the captain, which just shows, you know, how Punch and being made captain has actually had an influence on the way the team plays. Now, obviously, before I go on to talk about his performance, I'm just going to talk about how he is as the captain. So, obviously, Punch is a figure that obviously he was born just around the corner from Sellers Park. He is a born and bred in South London, and he is a figure that all the players have found really easy to unite with. They've seen the passion he's got, they they listen to him, and his performances well have reflected that. The fact that the players now are, you know, united around him, they all want to try and get what they can for the captain. All of these things like that, we've seen an improvement with. And certainly, much like Kabai, and much like Ward, since Punchin's been made the captain, that sort of responsibility, that sort of passion has helped his uh, helped, helped his performances to improve. But in this game, obviously, obviously his performance was good, hence why I've given him the 7. But when he was in possession, he kept the ball well, unlike Kabai. You know, Kabai, yes, he had an alright game defensively, but when he had the ball, he kept losing it. Well, when Jason Punchin had it, and when we had the possession, which is about maybe 20 to 30 percent, we didn't have much. But when we had the ball, he used it well. And then obviously, when he didn't have the ball, much like what Kabai did, much like what Luca did, you know, he tried to make sure that the team kept the position so they could get blocks and tackles in, and also that we kept our shape so all the players were in line with each other so we could play off side trap. All the things like this that you would expect a captain to do in command, and you would expect the team to do as a whole. Everyone done that very well. But, you know, like I said, I've given him a 7, a solid performance from the captain. And actually, another win as the captain. So, I think with Scott Dan now being injured and possibly missing the rest of the season with the ankle injury, that could be a chance for Punchin to maybe solidify his role as the captain. And certainly, come next season, if, you know, Sam Allardyce has to make a decision, I certainly would not object to having Jason Punchin as the captain. Because, like I said, he was born and bred in Croydon, so he's got that passion. He's got the passion on the pitch. He's got the passion off the pitch. He has skill, he has the creativity, so certainly I don't have a problem with it. And, you know, like I said, 
much like all of the midfield, they didn't really have a great deal of attacking threat because we were pressed in our own half. And he did have one chance, and like I said, his shooting's pretty decent. In this game, about on 26 minutes, he dragged the shot just wide. So, like I said, in possession, he was pretty good. And when he had the chance, he took the chance, and obviously, it went just wide. But certainly, another good performance from the captain. Obviously, now to move on to the front three of Wilfred Zaha, Christian Mitteki, and Andres Townsend. Starting off with Wilfred Zaha, who I am going to give a 9. The best player on the pitch. His goal was a fantastic sporadic effort when the Chelsea players least expected it. His assists showed great awareness too. He was outstanding in possession and did a great deal of defensive work too. So obviously Wilfred Zaha here, I've given him an 8 and once again it was an absolutely fantastic, outstanding, solid performance from Wilfred Zaha and you know, the they, we run out of words to describe his performances because of how well he's playing and, you know, credit must go to him. But much like Christian Benteke, obviously they both scored goals, but Zaha came off the international break having scored a weldy of a goal. Obviously, the goal of which you can see the uh, video of on the channel, but certainly he continued that form off. And in this game, once again, like he always is, he was the best player on the pitch. And obviously, his goal was fantastic, obviously he, got, he scored one and assisted one, here's one was the one, the equaliser, it was fantastic, you know, Chelsea players weren't really expecting, uh, expecting it because they thought they were comfortable in the game because they were winning 1-0, but Zaha, lovely counter attack by Benteke, put the ball to Zaha, Zaha spun around three defenders, you know, managed to guide it, curl it into the bottom corner, pass Courtois and obviously score the equaliser, that goal was fantastic. His assist as well, you know, that was fantastic as well. The fact that Benteke, I've never seen Benteke run that fast before, but Benteke's obviously been working on his fitness. Punching, passed the ball to Benteke. Benteke ran about 20 yards, found Zaha again, done a 1-2. Benteke had the ball again, got onto Courtois and obviously dinked it over him. So the fact that Zaha got a goal in the game, got an assist, is credit to how well he played. And for that alone... He deserves the nine. The fact that the fact that he scored an assisted one, but also you know he was outstanding in possession. So when we had the ball, the the free the thirty percent of time we had the ball, he'd try and you know have lovely direct runs. And there was two or three chances throughout the game where you know we're winning two one at that point. We don't want to concede another goal, but we still go forward and attack. There was a few times where Zaha linked up with Slop, you know, done some lovely one twos, got the ball in the area, had a few shots, and actually he had about two or three shots which went just over. One of them got saved by the feet of Courtois. So even though we were trying to protect our two one lead, he still tried to go forward and create chances. So that's good. The fact that when we had possession he could do stuff with it. But much like the rest of the team, when we didn't have possession, obviously he had to do his defensive work to sort of soak up the pressure and he'd done that really well and that's something that you don't really get credited for, uh, what wingers don't get credited for uh, enough really in my opinion, the fact that they track back, you know, they defend, try and get rid of the ball and, and Zaha had done that very well and considering sometimes at times it looked like we were putting maybe 11 players behind the ball when we were doing that all of the players done their job it wasn't like they were just there to make up the numbers all of the players done their job and obviously that's what Wolf Zaha done but besides Hennessy because I personally think Hennessy was the best player in the game because his saves actually kept us in the game bar Hennessy you know Zaha was the best player and some people may debate about this you know the fact that he scored a goal and assisted one he may deserve you know be the best player but I think Hennessy was the best player, but, you know, Zaha's just behind him. And, you know, like I said, scored the first goal, assisted Benteke from the second. And obviously, when in possession, he was an absolutely, you know, he was the threat. He was a threat to Chelsea. They couldn't cope with his pace. They couldn't cope with his direct running, the, his crosses. They couldn't cope with his skill. And that's why it's really important that he plays well, because he will obviously be crucial to us staying in the league. And the fact that we can beat the champions elect at home, the fact that we can score two goals against them and contain him for the rest of the game if we could have this resilience against the likes of man city man united arsenal we might have a chance to maybe nick a few points off of them because if we do what we've done against chelsea who bear in mind have been better than all of them teams put together then of course we've got a chance but really this sort of form this sort of skill he's got this sort of yeah this form the form that he's under is the best it's his best season he's had in his whole career in his in his whole life this is the best season he's had and actually some news came out after the game and obviously this this was after Steve Parrish went on talk sport to talk about this and he actually said that Zaha 
you know, once we're safe in the Premier League, once we have that uh, status, much like with Sacco's situation, once we're safe, they'll start negotiating uh, a new contract deal. And this is obviously the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham. They want to sign Wilfred Zaha because they've seen how much skill he's got. But Steve Parrish has said they really want him to, uh, really want Zaha to stay at the club. Sam Allardyce has come out and said he's a crucial player to the way we set up, the way we play. We want to keep him at the club. So the manager, the chairman, want to keep him at the club. And in doing that, they've got to try and give him a new contract. So the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, they're going to be offering offering big money in the summer to try and sign him. So it's rumoured he's probably going to become the newest or the new highest played player at the club. We have a deal that's believed to be around his contract about 100 and 110 grand a week so this would make him palace's highest played player behind or about the same as the likes of kobai and um, benteke but certainly he he's worth every penny of that you know if this means he stays at palace and signs a long contract or a long-term contract and stays at palace for the rest of his career because we offer him this much money then it'll be worth every penny because how good he is his skill his pace everything he offers to the side is fantastic and if he can continue this form then i don't see why he why well, I don't see why we wouldn't stay up because if he continues this form obviously he's going to be creating chances and helping us to win games but if he can continue to do this and keep us in the Premier League then I don't see why because at the end of the day 110 grand a week there's other clubs that would offer that you know the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham so if we offer it before that and get him on a new contract then of course he'll stay at us for the near future so obviously he can score more goals and be a more attacking threat for us but I certainly hope obviously I first of all hope that we stay up but when we if we do stay up and I say I'm not going to say when we stay up yet because we're not safe but if we stay up I still think you know the likes of Zaha, Sacco as soon as we stay up these guys need to be signed on new deals as soon as possible because obviously their influence on the side is amazing and before I go on to talk about Christian Menteke final stat really about Zaha I said he's had the season of his life he scored six goals and had seven assists so just contemplate that that just shows you how good of a game he's had the fact that he's got six goals and seven assists and obviously that's hence the reason why clubs like Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham they want to buy him because obviously all of that threat he's got attacking threat that can obviously give them that can assist them with their team. Obviously now I'm going to move on to the striker Christian Menteke, who I am going to give an 8. Palace fans have questioned his confidence. The goal he scored, a cheeky chip following a wonderful first touch, dispelled that fear. It was an excellent game from the Belgium striker. So obviously Christian Benteke here, I've given him an 8 because once again it was a fantastic performance from him. And obviously before we went on to the international break, he didn't really have that much that much confidence and that's why he hadn't scored he hadn't scored a single goal in 13 games. But in over the international break, he scored two goals for Belgium and that seems to have rebooted his confidence. And obviously that resulted in him having the confidence to make that 20 yard run and obviously score his goal he did against Chelsea. But you know his confidence has been key I think this season you know in the times where he scored loads of goals he's had loads of confidence but when he went through a dry patch he sort of lost that confidence but now because he had the chance to play for Belgium he scored two goals from them that sort of rebo uh, rebooted let's say his confidence and obviously that's why he performed quite well uh, against Chelsea but the goal he scored fantastic goal you know nothing like the goals he scored this season you know some of his goals have been headers some have been penalties some have been sort of balls in the box and he's hit them this goal was a completely different caliber of goal and this certainly could be up there with Andros Townsend's goal Wilfred Zaha's goal uh, as one of the goals of the season because it was a lovely counter-attack obviously punching passing the ball to Benteke to Zaha back to Benteke but he chipped the keeper fantastic skill to actually be able to make the keeper come out of you so you could you know have the space to chip it over him the touch was good as well the fact that he stopped the ball dead so the keeper would come then he chipped it over him that was fantastic and that just dispelled all the fear you know the fact that he scored that goal and the fact that he had so much passion when he was celebrating just shows that his fear is now gone and he's got that confidence back but you know overall excellent game from Belgium striker there isn't really much more to say other than the fact that he scored the goal that was fantastic he obviously assisted Ben uh, Zaha for his goal 
which just also is credit to, you know, how he performed. And, you know, although in the game, yes, he scored the goal and assisted one, other than that, because we were playing quite deep and defending, he didn't really have any other real opportunities. And I'll go on to talk about what that reflects on later in the podcast. But I've just got a few stats here. And obviously, Christian Menteke, he was much, much better in the first half as he was in the second half. And that's because, because we were playing so defensive, he didn't really have any chances in the second half. But in the first half, he had 100% take-ons completed. He he won four aerial duels. He had two shots created. He had one. Sorry, he had two chances created. He had one shot. Obviously, one of them, the one being on target, he had one assist and one goal. So them stats alone just show you how good of a game he had. The fact that he had take-ons, he could take on players, even though he isn't the fastest player. The fact that once again he's winning aerial duels, and considering he's got the he's the highest winner of aerial duels in the league, just shows how good his aerial presence is. Two chances created, obviously scored one and assisted one, so that's just credit to the way he performed. And obviously, if you weren't at the game or you haven't seen Match of the Day yet and you haven't been on Twitter, then I don't know where you've been. But if you haven't, go onto the YouTube channel and you can see a video of both his goal and Zaha's goal. I've edited it, quite a nice edit there. And obviously, do watch it because, you know, it's a really good video. It shows you the goals they scored and I titled it uh, Fight fight and uh, commitment I believe it was so that's just two words I used to describe the performance the fact that they had the fight in the game and the fact that you know they had that determination as well then you know, that's what I called it fight and commitment and determination so the fact that all the team had them three things was fantastic so you know like I said if you do want to look at a replay of the goal then of course go on to the channel and as I'm recording uh, the video just pick up my phone here yeah the video just hit over a thousand views so thank you for that that's the second video this month to go over a thousand views and I must thank you guys the listeners the viewers for actually helping me to get to that stage because you know when I first started up the channel I never imagined for any videos to go over a thousand views and actually one of them obviously this one with Zaha and Bateka's goal that's just gone over a thousand views there's another one that's nearly at three thousand views so once again I can't thank you enough for the support you've had on the channel and obviously Christian Bateka just in summary here once again scored a goal assisted one fully deserves the eight and hopefully his reboosting confidence will help us to help him to score more goals this season obviously moving on now to the final player of our starting 11 and that is Andrus Townsend who I am going to give a 7. A performance that Townsend won't get too much credit for but his effort that threw, throughout frustrated Chelsea. So obviously Andrus Townsend here I've given him a 7 because much like the rest of the team much like the players who didn't have that much influence in the game he was his performance won't really be remembered because he didn't really do much throughout the game but he won't get credit for it even though he done quite a lot of work and you know his effort throughout the game although he wasn't as good as an attacking threat as he's been in past games his effort you know to frustrate Chelsea restricting them to chances was fantastic and you know I've talked about his performance not being remembered not being you know not getting credit for it it's because he didn't really see much of the ball and because he didn't really see much of the ball because Chelsea, uh, because Palace were camped, because we were camped in our own half, it meant that he didn't really have any chances to attack forward. And when we did attack, it was always down the left flank where Zaha and Benteke were playing. But even though he didn't see much of the ball, he won't get credit for that. But, you know, his effort and the fact that he was, you know, doing defensive work, that was fantastic. And that's what you want from wingers, you know. If you scored a goal and you, or you've, you're leading in a game, let's say, you want to protect that lead. And of course, you want the wingers to do defensive work. And that's exactly what Townsend done. Although he didn't see much of the ball and didn't do attacking work as an attacker should do, when he was called upon to do defensive work, you know, tracking back, making tackles, he'd done that all very well. And that's what needs to be commended. The fact that, yes, he didn't have the best attacking game, but I've given him the seven because of how much or how well or how good, let's say, his defensive work, work was. But do comment below with what you think, you know, whether you think he deserves the seven, considering that I've said he doesn't really get the credit he deserves but I certainly I gave him the seven because I think we need to give him credit because his defensive work was crucial to the way we played obviously that was the final player of our starting 11 do comment below with your player ratings obviously rating all of the players from 1 to 10 obviously with how you thought they performed throughout the game just to move on to the substitutes really just a sort of quick summary you know Scott Dan I'm not really going to give him a rating because although he made a few blocks and when he came on and a few tackles he suffered the bad uh, knee injury and that he was only on the pitch for about 10 minutes so I can't really you know rate him for that but you know Allardyce did say he confirmed the extent of in or he couldn't confirm the extent of the injury that's obviously because they haven't been able to go to the hospital and have all the relevant scans to uh, you know show the injury but it was an ankle injury we know that much you know we know that when he made the block Diego Costa stamped on his ankle as he went down and he twisted it 
But, you know, we do know, what we do know for certain is he will miss the Southampton game, along with James Tompkins. But certainly, these two were fantastic in the game, you know, Tompkins and Scott Dan. And the fact that Scott Dan actually made a really important block. Yes, he got injured in the process, but that block kept us in the game. And obviously, we look back at the game now, and that's why we won the game. The fact that that tackle alone kept us in the game, and obviously, resulted in us winning the game. But certainly, no rating for Scott Dan, obviously, because he was only on the pitch for about 10 minutes. And, you know, hopefully... It did look like a bad knee injury, but hopefully it isn't as bad and maybe he'll be back towards the end of the season. Obviously, Damien Delaney, another substitute, I'm going to give him a 7. You know, he came on the field, on, came onto the field with difficult circumstances. So, the circumstance being we were trying to protect our lead and it was quite difficult because Chelsea were putting us under quite a lot of pressure. But he done what was asked of him. You know, he done a solid defensive work, stopped Chelsea having their chances, which meant that we managed to protect our lead and obviously that helped us to get the win same with martin kelly i'm also going to give him a seven you know although he was criticized quite a lot at the beginning of the season for how well or how badly we were playing in this game he played pretty well he came onto the pitch you know and his contribution he did play a big part his contribution defensively was fantastic you know him and delaney uh, him and delaney were brought onto the pitch to add a little bit more solidity to go to a back five to contain chelsea and he'd done exactly that. And his contribution was quite key in the end. You know, the fact that his solidity was good. Uh, yeah, the fact that he brought solidity was what was crucial in the fact that we were able to contain Chelsea. But, you know, him and Delaney. So, Kelly and Delaney may have to actually play the next few games. Obviously, with Tompkins and Dan going out injured. And I think, based on this performance, the fact that these two came off the bench and performed quite well. I don't see, against Southampton, if one of these plays, either one of them plays, I don't see why... You know, they couldn't put in a solid performance because in this game, they showed us the quality they've got. And although Martin Kelly, I certainly know I've criticised him quite a lot this season, giving him twos, threes and four ratings. But certainly this performance has showed that he's got his confidence back and he can come off the bench and make an impact. So now, if he does get chosen to play in a centre-back role, which I personally think is better than playing as a wing or wing back or a full back, whatever position he's played at, then I think, yeah, we could see a slight improvement in his performance. But certainly... Both substitutes, Damien Delaney Kelly giving them sevens. And obviously Scott Dan doesn't get a, a rating because obviously he was only on the pitch for about, you know, 10 minutes. But like I said, that tackle he made, which he got injured from, if it weren't for that tackle, we could have conceded another goal. So although he got injured in the process and it may come back to punish us, that tackle obviously kept us in the game. Obviously, just to go over a little summary of the game, you know, just to talk about Sam Allardyce, you know, I thought... He changed the side for the better, you know, he changed the formation, he changed the way they were set up to try and contain and cope with Chelsea. He'd done that very well. And although, you know, the early results weren't great, the fact that we conceded really early on, the first four minutes of the game, you know, the work rate, the focus that he's now got in the side, the fact that he sort of drilled into the team that you shouldn't let your heads drop once you concede, that sort of mentality, that work rate, that focus helped us to go on and win the game and, you know, that sort of having that installed, having that drilled into your system and having the Palace players actually know how crucial that is to keep going in the game ensure that Palace made a battle of every match and certainly in this game we went a goal down we didn't let our heads drop and the work rate increased we got back into the game and obviously went on to win the game so that just shows that how this work rate and this focus that Sam Allardyce has sort of instilled into the side is quite crucial and to be honest the word I've used or I've heard quite a lot on social media is actually or phrase is the palace of old you know has returned the fact that we played our counter-attacking style of football you know being on the back foot and actually going to use our chances and considering we had about 30 percent possession the fact that we won the game and the fact that we used our chances just shows how good that counter-attacking style was but you know the palace of old you know on under, under alan pardew would have let our heads drop and you know after conceded that in the first four minutes we wouldn't have been able to get back into the game because obviously Seth Fabregas scored in the fifth minute or fourth minute but you know Sam Allardyce made sure that you know the team once we once Chelsea scored we didn't let our heads drop continued playing as we were and that's that's what's different between the Alan Pardew side and the Sam Allardyce side the fact that they've got they won't let their heads drop and that's 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 really crucial you know the fact that we've 
Don't let our heads drop. Shows great character, great determination to get into the game. And against Chelsea, you know, Chelsea were constantly onslaughting us, you know, putting so much pressure on us. But because we had that character, that determination to get a win and get out of the relegation battle, that obviously helped us to win the game. And the final point, bullet point really I'm going to talk about, and that is instead of allowing the goal to impact negatively, so letting our heads drop, you know, we scored two goals after there, and then we remained firm for the rest of the game. And obviously that's what kept us in the game so the fact that we scored two goals got back into it stayed firm stayed solid for the rest of the game and then ultimately we ended up with an outstanding result so now to move on to the man of the match award but i thought of that and give you my man of match you know why i find the biggest influence in the game i'm now going to give the results of my twitter poll so obviously, if you do want to vote in next week's Twitter poll and have your opinion heard on who you thought the best player was, and obviously the player with the biggest influence, then you can vote in next week's Twitter poll, which you can find at the CPC Podcast. So the Twitter poll isn't run by Ecrystal Palace, it's actually run by my own personal Twitter account, which obviously you can find using the at Ecrystal Palace. Now obviously, much like the official Ecrystal Palace account, I highly recommend you do give me a follow, because on there I do regularly update it with the latest news, and of course I do post Twitter polls for you guys to get involved in. But this week, you know, it was such a great performance, you know, there's, I'm really speechless really after the game, because there isn't really a word to describe how good that performance was against the Champions Elect. But to be honest, I managed to narrow it down to four players, and obviously some people may disagree with me, but I'll go on to talk about why I put these four players there. But four nominations were Wayne Hennessy, Mamadou Sakho, Jan Kabai and Wilfred Zaha. Now before I go on to talk about why I've put them players there, you know, the likes of Christian Menteke, Luka, Punch and Tompkins, and to be honest, the whole squad could probably make it onto the shortlist. But you know, because it was such a fantastic resilience performance, they could have all got on there. But the reason I didn't put them on there is because on Twitter there's only four slots, so you can only pick, you know, your four people who you thought the best players were. But also, you know, I personally thought that these players shone for me in the game more so than all of the other players and that's why I've put them on there but like I said I can't highlight it enough the fact that you know there could have been maybe if I had 11 slots on Twitter I would have put the whole team there because the whole team does deserve recognition for the fantastic resilience performance but certainly you know there may be a bit of disagreement over what I think and what you think but do comment below in the YouTube comments whether you agree with who I've put in the shortlist and do comment below with your man of match and who you obviously thought had the biggest influence but just starting off with the Twitter results so in in last place with 1% of the votes was going goodbye and obviously that is a that is someone I put in there who some people may disagree with but I've gone to talk about why obviously in third in third place with 23% of the votes was actually Wilfred Zaha in second place with 28% of the votes was Mamadou Sakho which means the winner of this week's Man of the Match poll for the game against the Champions Elect Chelsea was actually Wayne Hennessy with 48% of the votes so congratulations Wayne you don't get a trophy or certificate but you do get my sincere congratulations on what was another solid performance from you and obviously a solid performance from the whole team but just to go through you know in a little bit of a summary why i've put these players in here you know wayne hennessy he's probably the best performer it's probably his best performance in a palace shirt so the fact that he's had his best game must give you must give him credit for but in the game he made so many saves to keep us in the game and if it weren't for him making these crucial saves we could have obviously lost the game but we could have lost it by maybe you know, five, six goals, because Chelsea obviously had that many chances. Obviously, Mamadou Sacco, he's a rock. He's absolutely solid. And hopefully, Palace sign him on a permanent deal. But in this game, he was outstanding defensively. His performance was fantastic against Diego Costa. And considering he's, this, I think he's second in the Premier League uh, scorers list in the this season, the fact that he managed to contain him and stop him and restrict him to only two chances, I think that's very good. And Yohan Kabai... He's sort of the debatable one, but the reason I put him on there, other than the other players, you know, I would have put Christian Benteke in there, but the reason I put Yohan Kabai over Christian Benteke is, yes, Benteke has scored and assisted, but I thought Yohan Kabai sort of controlling the Palace midfield and the fact that he had more influence over the course of the whole game was obviously better than just having influence in the first half. And obviously, Wilfred Zaha, we know what to expect from him. He's fantastic, and I think the last sort of four weeks he's been on the Malamat shortlist, but his performance once again was fantastic. He scored the first goal. <clears throat> Sorry, assisted Benteke for the second. That alone was fantastic. And the fact that he was a constant threat to Chelsea must get credited because of his pace, his skills and his runs. 
all of that must be credited. But certainly, all four of these players had fantastic performances. You know, Wayne Hennessy Sacco had a defensive contribution. Kabai for his contribution in the midfield uh, in, in controlling it. And obviously, Wilfred Zaha for his attacking threat once again. Uh, you know, for his pace, his skills, his runs, and obviously the goal and assist he got. But like I said in a minute, uh, at the beginning, I can't reiterate it enough. The likes of Christian Manteke, Luca Punch, and Tompkins, all of these players could have gone onto the shortlist. But I found it very difficult to pick them, so I've picked these four players. But do comment below with what you think. But my winner is quite obvious. I'm going to give it to Wayne Hennessy. So congratulations, Wayne. You know, it was between Wayne and Zaha, and the only reason I gave it to Hennessy over Zaha is yes, Zaha got the wit, got the goal to get us into the game, and he assisted the other one. But Wayne Hennessy, he truly did keep us in the game. If it weren't for his saves, his 14 saves he made, we could have lost the game by a bigger margin. So it's thanks to them saves that Hennessy made that we were able to keep into the game. And like I said, no, everyone's performance was fantastic, and no one's performance was any worse than the others. But I think Wayne Hennessy stood out for me because obviously his saves kept us in the game. So now you've heard my match report, player rankings on my man and match. That concludes this week's podcast. Now I've got an exclusive interview with Sam Allardyce, Christian Menteke and Wayne Hennessy following the game. Christian, brilliant win today. I think uh, we can be we can be proud of uh, of ourselves. The work that we that we did today was uh, was unbelievable, and I think yeah we had uh, uh, sometimes some luck, but I think uh, we deserve to win this game. Two great goals. Um, first of all, Will's goal. He's playing great at the moment, isn't he? I think you can see that the, the confidence uh, of the team is high at the moment. So we try just to to put that uh, on the pitch and that uh, we are like really, really good and we work hard for each other. So it's a four wins uh, in a row, so we can uh, we can be happy, but we have to, we have to, to keep going because it's uh, still a long way to go. You scored those goals for Belgium in the international break. Did that help you today, giving you a bit of confidence? I think I can't, uh, I can't deny it because as a striker, as soon as you you score, you feel more more free. You have uh, more confidence of yourself, of what you are doing, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to to help the teammate today to to get uh, those three points. And defensively as well, that so many defensive performances you could talk about. Wayne Hennessy in goal. Yeah, like I said, it's a uh, it's a massive win for all of us. I think from Wayne till me, we really uh, put uh, the dirty work. Uh, on the pitch and then uh, yeah we got what we what we deserve today and on to Southampton next I think that as I said now we have to we have to keep uh, we have to keep going because now we have uh, a game on Wednesday and then Saturday it won't be easy again uh, so sometime away but as I said the team uh, is really really confident and we have to we have to take uh, take that confidence there thanks Christian Wayne unbelievable win today fantastic win um, the dressing room is bouncing in there but um thought we thoroughly deserved it we defended well and didn't have the best of starts no but then again we turned it around quickly and like I was saying the, the boys are over the moon in there so yeah fantastic win for us yeah our two goals um Wilf and Christian both great goals weren't they they've been on fire them two hopefully they can keep going and uh like I was saying they've been brilliant um Will's goal special Ben Tekid with a little chip yes yeah, so special and especially to do it on a, on a day like this today is fantastic for us what do you think that game ranks in victory since you've been at the club um, that's that's probably up there with my best actually. Um, like I say, as soon as we got in that dressing room, everyone's just over, overwhelmed, and it's a fantastic achievement for us. And we're still on a good run, and hopefully that can continue. Have you ever had to make so many saves in one game? I haven't actually. I've made not far from it. Obviously, being with Wolves, and we've had a difficult time. But like I say, I thought the boys were fantastic today. It wasn't just myself. The key blocks in certain areas. I just wish. Obviously, we've had a couple of injuries. I just hopefully Scott Dan's okay who's uh, got stretched off, so we wish him all the best. And uh, yeah, come on. What was it like for you having to deal with the change of centre-backs all the time? Yeah, um, well, the thing is, I get to train with them every day, so you get used to them and, like I saying, every, every, every full-back, every defensive uh, centre-half is completely different. And uh, like I saying, it, they're just all the credit to play with. How did it feel during injury time? Because we were an absolute mess in the press box. It felt like it went on forever. We just, we couldn't believe it when seven minutes come up. Like I saying, it's a long seven minutes, you know, it felt like bloody 12. But um, no, the lads stick with it. And like I saying, it's a difficult place to come to and get some points. And I thought they were fantastic today. And like I saying, we were recovering now for Wednesday. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you so much. Cheers for that. Enjoy the weekend. Sam, wow, unbelievable wow. performance. Um, well, I think everybody 
<clears throat> uh, were surprised when Crystal Palace won here last season, but on the basis of the the um, the way um, Chelsea played last season, which were which was well below par from their performances normally, where they finished in the league and how many defeats they had, uh, this one uh, is without a doubt one of the most outstanding victories I think Palace has ever had, and I think that. To see that the champions, or what are going to be the champions in my belief, uh, 10 points clear and I think the last time they lost it was early against Liverpool and to come back from 1-0 down so so quickly showed the, the will and the desire and the determination, the belief of our players today and then the resilience factor, even with injuries. Uh, players coming on and going off, Tomkins and then Scott Dan, of, of all people, two centre-halves in one game and then everybody doing the job from the bench and uh, I mean, uh, you know, Wayne Hennessy in goal, simply outstanding when we needed him, the defence resilient, the front line, Christian, um, who I got a stat off our analysis lad saying Christian scored more goals for Chelsea against Chelsea than any other player in the Premier League, told him that he's done it again, Wilf done it again and um, you know the victory is so sweet and uh, of course our nerve ends just wanted to be relieved a bit more when Wilf missed that one late on but uh, and he could have had another one before that but you know there were some chances that Chelsea had definitely but there's some fantastic defending and some fantastic saves by Wayne Hennessy today and all that combination compu combination has given us a, a fantastic victory here. And what was the secret? It looked like you set up a little bit different today. Wilf playing off Benteke, was he? Well, no, no. Wilf, Wilf did right. Bert Christian did left split. So we wanted them to both to play wide of, uh, of what was uh, Chelsea's two centre-halves. So, and we wanted our uh, two, two uh, banks of four to cope with the talents of Pedro and Hazard and William and, uh, and, and of Costa, you know, and I think... Um, I think we were, were exceptionally good. Fabregas, I thought we were exceptionally good at doing that as well today. Um, went to a back five in the end because of the injuries, just to see the game out. And, uh, and like I said, it's uh, four wins on the trot now. But the big thing for me was the recovery from going 1-0 down, which, which you know, our, our recent victories, we, we haven't gone a goal behind. And yet we've gone a goal behind what are going to be, I think, the champions of the Premier League on their own patch and come back and won it. And that shows real character and real determination by the players. As you said, four wins in a row into the 30s now with regards to points. Is that really important psychologically? Psychologically it is. I think we're into single figures to get safe now. You know, 30, 31 points. I think that, uh, you know, 38 certainly uh, is, has been the, the security blanket for many, many years now. We want to push on and, and go to Southampton with a Unfortunately now a lot of injuries got to recover for Wednesday so these injuries have happened at the wrong time. We went through the whole of March not having to change the side early apart from Patrick. Now when we face three games in a week we've got we've got Tonks injured, we've got um, Scott Dan injured, particularly in that area it's um, difficult for us to cope but um, you know that's what we have to do. But this victory means that it's give us that little bit more breathing space and um, hopefully we can uh, we continue to go on from here, but the lads can't enjoy this victory too much because we've got to get ready for Wednesday. And um, you know, all credit to them. You know, this is the this is the biggest victory uh, this season by far. So there you have it. Now you've heard what Sam Lundlich, Christian Manteca, and Wayne Hennessy had to say after the game. That concludes this week's podcast for the game against Chelsea. But make sure to come back next week for my post-match review of the game against Southampton. So thanks for listening and remember to up the palace.